Hello everyone, welcome to Chasing Reformation um, Church History Study. Um, so something I talked to Brother Austin about doing for a while and just felt led to do it on here and just um, felt led to give you guys just a deep overview of stuff that I have learned throughout the years of church history. Um, I'm not an expert, not anything above all that, but it's something I have fell in love with because it was something I was never taught growing up. And um, I really, uh, we were teaching at church, we were pastoring that, and we just didn't get to finish that. We, Lord called us elsewhere, and um, we just wanted to get on here and give you guys some um, info on church history and a deep start. That's my dog. A deep study, and we love church history to our core. Um, it's ain't the prettiest thing, um, place to shoot. I'm in my house living room, my wife's at work, got the dogs with me today, so uh, this is going to be kind of fun, but um, got our beautiful Christmas tree in the background, so um, guys, I ask that you just pray for us as we start this, this is something we have desired to do, because um, I know on my end, um, talk to Brother Austin about this. A lot of people I grew up with who watched some of these videos, they didn't study church history. They wasn't raised with church history. Uh, maybe some more on Brother Austin's in have studied this. And I'm not the best to do this. Um, I'm just going to put it out right there. But it's something I have fell in love with, and I'm studying more and more. I'm in my office. I watch, listen to podcasts on church history. I listen to people read church history books. Uh, many of you do not struggle with the reading when you see me read on here. Please forgive me. I struggle with that. It's just something that happened when I was younger with epilepsy. It's the guys, I just felt like I wanted to do this. This is my main Austin talk the other day. We're just trying to sit in church right now. We're just growing. Um, we're not pastoring anywhere. And we felt like this would be a great ministry to help out why we are just being laid boys. And so, um, well, amen. So, um, we're just trying to grow in the knowledge of the word of truth. And so, guys, I hope this helped. The way I started all my church history classes when I was pastor was, was I would just start with just a layout of church history. And um, if you were from that church and you've watched this video, this ain't going to be like what we were learning there. Just kind of be more in depth on some other things. And so we just really just want to give you the insight, but at the same time, not going to be in depth. Um, I know that sounds weird, but that's how I'll explain later in a future video. Um, with all things we like to do, we like to pray before we get started. Father God, we bow humbly for the throne of grace. Thank you for being so good to us, Lord. Thank you for seeing so good to us, God. We thank you for seeing us in our day. We thank you for saving us and for loving us when we were sinners, God. And I ask Lord, you just bless us as we give the reading of your word. Help us teach, Lord. Help us give an overview of what church history is. We love you and praise you. Just stay with me. All right, y'all. If you have your Bibles, please turn with me to Matthew. And this is a verse that I've started out, and it's overused, and so people don't like to use it, but I love it because it gives a little bit of insight on the church and how it is going to be built. And in Matthew 16, starting in verse, let's just read 18, because that's really the main key of this whole thing. Verse number 18. And I, and I say also unto you that thou, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So guys, with that being read, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I'll build my church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. We can go into the inside of that. We can go to the Greek and Hebrew of that. But I just want to focus on how will he build his church. There's a few ways he'll build his church. And this is the day we're not talking about certain people. Today is an overview of how he built his church. I want you to look at the church and I want you to think of a building. 
Um, I know you say, well, we're bald eagles, don't think of a building, but I really want to give you an insight for a second. I want you to think of the foundation stones and the stones that if you just build on, and you got to have a foundation when you build, which would be Jesus. Then we see that upon this rock, which is stone, would be Peter and the twelve. And so when you see that the world with Christianity, Christianity, people don't realize, is one of the biggest religions in the world today. We think we're under, we're under persecution here in America because we never felt this way before, but Christianity is huge today. The church is everywhere. I, I always like to say the, you know, the church is universal. It's not just your local assembly down the street, which is important, but the, the church is universal there's people in Pakistan who are our brothers. There's people in China who are our brothers and sisters. There's people everywhere right now who is a part of the body and on that building stone of Christ. And so when we study church history, what we find is there is a stone that leads back all the way. There's stones upon stones. And if you go down them stones, and this is just a dumb summary of something, guys. Don't take, don't take this too literal or just something. This is just something the way I brought it out in my mind. When you see the stones, it'll always lead back to Jesus. If you have the biblical and the faith in Jesus Christ. How do we have that? Well, mostly our faith is built on the Bible, on sola scriptura, on scripture alone. Our whole faith and foundation is found in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the Gospels. In the Old Testament, it's found why he came. In the Gospels, we see the story of him coming to this world. Give me for just a second. Dogs. Man, gotta love them. And we see that they come. He comes. He's born in a manger. We see this through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We see the story of Christ. And we go into Acts. And we see the works of the apostles. And mostly we just see the works of Peter and Paul. And we see that this whole church was started from 12 men. From Jesus. And 12 men who would go to the four corners of the earth and declare the gospel. But at the same time, these men would declare the gospel. What they would do is they would write books. We know we got many of those. Uh, Peter and John and Paul would write epistles to the church that they started. And what we find is we see a story of Jesus that has been handed down to us through the apostles so that we can grow in our knowledge. But how do we have this? Um, I'm going to point somebody out that y'all can go watch and uh, listen to on Spotify. Um, Dr. Stephen Boyce, um, one of the men that I listen to on the canon of Scripture and on church history, let's just say I listen to his podcast daily. Sounds bad. I'm addicted to his podcast. Um... One of his podcasts that I've listened to over a hundred times just to go back and just get the knowledge of his podcast is how the bishops protected the scriptures throughout history. And man, it's beautiful. And so one thing that I've really loved is that study. And I'm going to bring something like that up. So we have that the foundation stone of the church we have it here in the Bible. At the same time, who do, where do we go to grow? We go to the church. We go to the ecclesia, the local assembly to grow. We can grow in our offices. We can grow in our houses. But we go to the church to hear the preaching and teaching of the word of God. And when you go to the church, you have qualified elders and pastors who were set up to do the teaching and the preaching of the Word of God. And we see that all through church history. 
for just a minute, I'm going to cut in to a study down the load for just one minute. We see this with the apostolic fathers. You say, what do you mean? We see this with how Peter was trained by Jesus. Paul was trained by Jesus after his resurrection and he learned from other scholars in the temple. And I know people about, well, he, does, he knew a lot about the Old Testament that he could teach his the boys that he trained. Sorry. And then we have Peter and Paul and they train a young man named Clement of Rome. And we actually have a letter by him called First Clement. But what we find is he was trained by Peter and he was trained by Paul. And he actually became the bishop of Rome. A little bit after Peter, he became the pastor of a church in Rome. And we see that with Clement. And what we see is he has two elders who trained him. He has two apostles who trained him. And for my friends who don't really understand, what I mean is they laid their hands, they, they taught him how to be what the pastor and the bishop and whatever he needed to be. He learned from Paul to be an evangelist and he learned from all the people how to do the job that he was set to do. Listen, young preachers, you have to be trained in this. Men of God, you have to sit under men who will train you in this. And I can tell you three right now that I know without a shadow of a doubt trained me in the Word of God. You say, what do you mean? I'll mention, I won't mention their names. I may mention one. I've talked about him on the podcast before. But I had one who taught me how to be an evangelist. When you start out preaching, you train. I felt like you needed, to, they felt like I needed to train to be an evangelist. I had one that actually taught me how to study the Bible, how to read the Bible, and how to preach the Bible. You say, what do you mean by that? He helped me in my understanding of the knowledge of the Bible with my Hebrew and Greek and all the other stuff. But I had one man who taught me to be a pastor. And that I, ever, I will always be grateful to them men. You say, what do you mean? Because in each step of my ministry, they stepped up to teach me how to be what I am today. Now, here's the thing. I don't agree with them men on a lot of things. Sometimes. They men that I will highly respect who trained me to become what I am today. If it wasn't for one of them, one of my main desires as a pastor is I love visiting hospitals. I, I That is something that I desire. I love to do. People say, well, it ain't your job as a pastor. Well, yes, but nobody else in the congregation, the half times the deacons don't even do it. That's what he trained me to do. He taught me how to visit the hospitals. And now it is actually one of my favorite things about ministry after studying and preaching is being able to visit the hospitals. One man, I won't mention his name on here, he taught me to take the boldness to be able to travel and to go evangelize and taught me how to evangelize and be part of the mission plan of evangelism to go out and preach at churches every week. But then I think about, and I'll say his name, Brother Spencer Baumgartner. Brother Austin knows him. Brother Stephen, who we've done a video with that will be coming soon, knows him. And the brother, um, Brother Spencer was the one who taught me how to study, how to, how to test study, how to pray, how to get ready for sermons, how to, how to, when I had a question that I couldn't answer when I was studying something, he was always there. Now, Bible college helped me and all that. And there's so much that a Bible college can do. And I, if you can go to Bible college, go to Bible college. But what I'm saying is, always have men who can teach you in your churches. And I know I totally got off topic there, and I did not mean to. I'm sorry. That's just something I felt like I needed to say. So with Clement... He had Peter, he had Paul, 
And I believe that Paul had other, I believe if he was a friend of Peter and Paul, he would have had other disciples and they would have been his influences. And so when we have church history, what we find throughout church history is we find is that Peter and Paul, trained by Jesus, and they would train Clement, Luke, and Timothy, who we read about in the Bible, who would go and pastor in Ephesus. Um, Paul would train. Actually, I don't think... Paul really got down with Timothy. He was like a father to Timothy. He trained him, and he sent him to pastor to Ephesus. We see with Paul, Clement of Rome, we see that, that he had it from both ends. He had Peter, he had Paul, he had two fireballs. And so with church history, that, that's how church history has always went on. The church gave forth bishops and pastors for my Reformation and Reform brothers and Reformers. Think of it this way. Calvin and Knox and these men from they all went to Geneva to learn. The men went to Geneva to learn under how to be pastors, how to be reformers, how to be all this stuff by Calvin in Geneva. They learned under a pastor the same way that Peter learned under Jesus. So through all church history, what we find is we find that pastors, the scriptures, and all these other people have protected the church. They protected sacred scripture. So if you want more on that, I totally just obliterated that. I'm a southern boy. I'm not that smart. Um, out here on the farm. And if you want to know on that, I, I plead with you guys, please go listen to Dr. Stephen Boyce on his podcast on facts on how the early church, how the bishops protected scripture and God protected. Now I'm not saying that God didn't protect scripture. Just listen to him explain it. A whole lot better than I can do. So what we find, and so let's get back. I know I am scatterbrained. I'm watching my dogs. I'm just trying to... We see that they were men were trained. At the same time, men were being persecuted. Nero pops up. All these emperor pops up. And they're just writing documents. The foundation stone of the church is built on Christ. And when you go for Christ, no matter what happens to you, you will live, you'll die, whatever takes place, God will always prevail. The church has been around for 2,000 years. And has been protected. And listen, there's been times the church has abused, and there's been times the church has been abused. There's been times the church has been under persecution. There's been times that we all messed up as pastors and preachers. But there's always been a line of bishops and pastors who were trained. And listen, I always say like I was trained by the book. Exactly right. You were trained by the apostles, by the book. Because I know that Paul gives us Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, um, 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, Galatians, all these books in the Bible he gives us. Peter gives us two epistles. We actually believe that Mark's epistle, uh, of Mark's gospel, was actually Peter's eyewitness account. And so what, and Luke, gospel was Paul's gospel and so what we find is is that the church has been given a resource in the Bible to tell us where we come from and it's our job to search out history and find that the church wasn't started in Nicaea the church wasn't started with Constantine the church had been going on for years and years the Trinity has been known for years and years. All this stuff that happened was not because of what Constantine did. 
It's because of what Christ did with his foundation of building his church. And see, guys, you will find that there's always in every generation men of God will understand for truth. Even in when the apostles died and all the apostles were dead, apostolic fathers stepped up and took the job. When the reformers, they stuck up and took the job. Catholic age, the wrong, the medieval, there was always men. John Wycliffe, John Huss, men stood up for what was truth in the Word of God. So guys, overview wasn't much. I know it wasn't, but it's something when we get in there, I hope to be more planned out next week. I just felt like getting this up and getting it started. And then hopefully, we can have some stuff on church history. So guys, this is all I have for you today. I know it wasn't much. I know it wasn't history. But we have to remember is that we have the true church in our heart. We are part of the foundation. So when you see somebody on TikTok saying, if you ain't part of the Roman Catholic Church, you and Christian, let me tell you something. If Jesus Christ dwells in you, you are part of the true church. So guys, we love you. I want to say this. Um, Tuesday, I actually got a surprise. My mother um, is actually going to be coming on to the podcast uh, talking about something that we talked about as a child. St. Nicholas, somebody who I have loved to grow. And if you know this channel, we talk a lot about St. Nicholas slapping the area on at the Council of Nicaea. So guys, my mother um, is going to come on here. She she was the one who actually got me digging into St. Nicholas as a kid. And so guys, we love you. Got a, I know it was scattered. I hope next week's will be better. I know I didn't do much good with helping y'all with history, but I just wanted to give you an overview of how we're going to look at it. We're going to start out by Peter. We're going to go to Paul. We may stop at Stephen. You don't know what we may. I may do. But then we're going to get the Apostolic Fathers, and we're going to go through the history of the church. Don't know how long it's going to take. Could take a long time. So I can't wait, guys. God bless. See y'all soon. Grace the Lord Jesus Christ be with y'all. God bless.